It's estimated that 700,000 people in the UK have glaucoma, but half don't know they have it. For most people, the signs of glaucoma are first spotted by an optometrist at a routine eye test. Leading charity Glaucoma UK is encouraging more people to get an eye test every two years, unless told otherwise by a medical professional. Glaucoma can be symptomless, and you can lose sight to the disease before you're able to spot the signs. As part of Glaucoma Awareness Week 2023, the charity is encouraging members, supporters, and anyone who is willing to raise awareness of the disease to share what glaucoma means to them. Glaucoma Awareness Week this year will run from 26 June to 2nd July, and is an annual awareness-raising opportunity. So, what is glaucoma? Well, it's a group of progressive eye conditions that occur when fluid inside the eye does not drain properly. This causes a build-up of pressure, which damages the optic nerve. As the optic nerve becomes damaged, vision is lost, usually starting around the edge of the field of vision, or peripheral vision. There are no early symptoms of glaucoma, and up to 40% of the peripheral vision can be lost without the patient noticing. Although age is one of the biggest risk factors, the over 40s are more likely to develop the disease. It can affect anyone at any age. We're joined today by a host of voices who have all very kindly agreed to share their experiences with glaucoma. They are Chris Hunton, Emily Dunmore Rebel, Martin Sawyer, Rachel Dalgleish, Roy Hathaway, Louise Gow, Carolyn Franks, Jane Maloney, Andrea Errington, and Lynn Rumsey. So, we'll hear from them now. So, first question, if you could please tell us in as much detail as you can, how was your glaucoma diagnosed? Yes, of course. Um, to be honest, uh, it all came as a little bit of a shock. Um, I guess now people know more about the fact that if you've had uh, glaucoma in the family, you should be uh, kind of checked uh, more often. But uh, I wasn't really aware of that. So I actually went for a routine eye test uh, probably around uh, my 39th uh, kind of 40th uh, birthday. And um, it was there the optometrist uh, diagnosed me um, with sort of glaucoma. I said, look, you know, we're, we're pretty concerned about this. Um, and I remember it being uh, an incredibly sobering moment because uh, although 39 is probably uh, slightly old to say I was still youthful, um, nothing really had sort of impacted me. I'd been very fortunate. Nothing had really impacted me very significantly. And I just remember uh, saying to the optometrist, oh, glaucoma, right. Um, you know, what does that entail? And him saying, oh, well, you know, you'll need to take eye drops. Uh, and I just remember, and this was a very sobering moment, I said, oh, yeah, so how long will I need to take those for? Uh, and he said, oh, that'll be for the rest of your life. And uh, I just remember that really kind of hit me because up until that point, any sort of injury or, you know, illness I'd had was something kind of temporary. You treated it and uh, it went away. And now suddenly I was sort of faced with this thing that I was going to have to um, sort of deal with for the rest of my life. So I remember that being, uh, yeah, quite, quite a sobering, uh, quite a sobering experience. Well, it, it sort of came about um, over many years. I've been playing squash for a long time and I just kept noticing as the years were going on, I was finding it more and more difficult to track a squash ball. And I went to a number of, um, sort of high street opticians over the years as my eyesight was, you know, was deteriorating. Um, you know, just for reading glasses, that sort of thing. And I kept mentioning this to me and they kept saying, no, no, it's not a problem, not a problem, not a problem. Um, or try these glasses, try that. And nothing worked at all. We made it any better. And so, and then, obviously, during lockdown, we weren't allowed on to squash courts for you know, obvious reasons. And then when I went back to playing squash afterwards, I noticed there was a significant difference in my ability to track squash ball. And I thought, this isn't right. You know, I'm not able to play squash at the level I, I was playing at. It's not age-related. It's not fitness-related. It's definitely eyesight-related. So I went to see um, an optometrist and ophthalmic opticians, and within five minutes, I'd been provisionally diagnosed with glaucoma. Okay, so I I went for a regular checkup at my optician, um, and I'd asked for the um, OCT scan as a, as a bit of an extra, um, and this was in uh, about September 2021, and my optician noticed a bit of an anomaly and said to me, uh, nothing to worry about, but he would like to refer me for a checkup with a, an ophthalmologist just to make sure everything was OK. Um, so I, I got the referral uh, uh, through my GP 
it, it took a little bit of time. I can always talk about that later, but um, uh, eventually I managed to get to see um, the ophthalmology department at my local hospital in June the following year, so June 2022. And it was at that point that they formally diagnosed glaucoma, so primary open angle glaucoma. I'm actually very short, I was very short sighted. So I was going to my high street opticians once a year to get my eyesight checked and um, my glasses prescription um, strengthened usually. Anyway, as part of that sort of routine check process, um, the uh, optician noticed um, a problem when I was doing the visual fields. They were doing visual fields at my particular optician at that time. And when he found out that my parents had glaucoma, he suggested that I make that I get a referral from my GP um, to um, you know to, to to the specialist hospital um, in our area um, to to get it checked out. So really, it was as a result of um, having my eyes checked every year uh, at a high street optician. Um, to, to monitor my, my, my short sightedness basically and to, to up, update my, my prescription uh, for my glasses. So um, I got the referral and um, I attended an eye clinic. I'm still attending that eye clinic. And um, I've been going for, I think, for about a year or two. And then they, that was when they gave the diagnosis for, for glaucoma. Um, that was in back in 2008. Well, both my parents had it, but they died a long time ago when I was in my 30s. Um, so I knew it was like likely I would have it. I had an operation on the eye muscle when I was three, worn glasses since I was three. So basically, I kept going to the opticians every year. And they um, at one point, they said, yeah, your eye pressure is high. We'll send you to hospital. They sent me to hospital and they said, no, you're still all right. Um, a few years later, I went back to the optician and uh, I remember it really well because there wasn't a very bright girl who did this, the test where they do the spray of air into your eye. And she was really a bit dim and she literally sprayed into my, I'm not exaggerating, about 20, 25 times. It was really stinging and horrible. She obviously couldn't believe that the pressure was so high. Um, and then, of course, I, I was really quite distressed by this because it's a horrible experience. It was both eyes. Um, and once I saw the, the ophthalmologist, she said, yeah, yes, your pressure is 36. And of course, it should be considerably less. Um, yeah, and then uh, they, they immediately referred me to the hospital. But even then, it went wrong because I didn't get a letter. When a letter did come through about two months later, it had the wrong name on it, but right address. So it still had to ring up eventually, literally, it must have been four months since the trip to the opticians. I finally did get the hospital appointment. Um, and as soon as I was tested, they called the consultant in and I had immediate um, laser surgery on both eyes. Uh, by the optician uh, who uh, decided that the pressure was a bit high and so arranged for me to go to my local hospital. And that's when I discovered I got glaucoma. I've been wearing glasses since I was 10 years old. Um, so obviously I was, went for a routine eye examination and it was just with the usual optician and he did a pressure test and a fields test. Uh, the pressure was fine and the fields test was um, some blank patches. So he referred me to the local hospital where there's an ophthalmology department um, and because I was only 35, it wasn't initially diagnosed as uh, glaucoma um, and it was only in one eye. So I had a scan and to check if there was anything pressing on the optic nerve and sort of started on treatment and then decided a few years later to say, yeah, we'll treat it as glaucoma. Well, it was a bit of a shock, actually, because I'd been for my eyes tested about two months before and um, just told that my glasses were perfect. The pressures were were normal. I got I got no. I've always had glaucoma in the family on both maternal and paternal sides, and my mum developed glaucoma. So it's always been a thing that whenever I've been for my eyes to be checked, I've always you know 
made sure that I've had the glaucoma check sort of thing. So I came away knowing that everything was okay. And then um, I decided that I was fed up wearing glasses and I'd like my eyes sorted. So I went to Manchester Eye Hospital and it was while I was being tested there that they took my pressures and said, you've got glaucoma, to which I said, no, I haven't, you know, less than eight weeks ago. And it was my pressures were in the 20s. Um, and uh, it, I got very cross, actually. And I, I actually complained to the opticians and they said, well, there was a slight thing. They could have picked it up, but they didn't. To which I said, but you knew I had glaucoma running through the family. So needless to say, I never went back there again. Um, anyway, I went home with a prescription, got onto the national, um, uh, the local hospital, and uh, they sorted me through. This was when we lived in Devon. And uh, I've been on my drops ever since. When I got home and I told my husband, he just said, don't forget what happened to your mum. She was always told, as long as you put the drops in, you'll be all right. And that's something that I've always remembered. Put the drops in and you're all right, and you are. Um, yeah, that, that's it. I, you know, you, I've, I've just drilled, drilled it into my girls to get their children sorted as well, just to keep on top of it. Right, well, um, my glaucoma was diagnosed uh, way back in 1991. Uh, I was about 14 years old, and I'd been having um, a few minor headaches, uh, nothing nothing major. Um, most of my family are short-sighted, so my mum had arranged then to um, send me to an optician just for a regular eyesight check. Um, when I got there, the optician, he was checking my eyes as, as normal and he stopped and saw something he didn't really like and he couldn't really explain what that was. But he did then say, I suggest you attend your local eye hospital because there's something I need to, I would like to have checked out. Um, so it was that very day I, I went to the eye hospital and, you know, waited to be seen and and it took a little while, a few tests, and I was sat down, I remember, it was quite a long time ago, but I remember sitting down and the um, consultant sitting with me and said, oh, well, we think you have open angle, uh, like a juvenile open angle glaucoma. And has anybody in your family uh, been diagnosed with this? And they hadn't, in, in my knowledge or my parents' knowledge. And um, so it was quite a surprise to us to find that I had such a condition and it was something I'd never even heard of. Um, and so it was a bit, I remember feeling a bit afraid, you know, thinking, what, what is this? You know, I've never heard of it. Is it, is it something that can be uh, fixed? Uh, I was nervous about discussion that we had with the consultant because um, they recommended almost immediately uh, trabeculectomy surgery on each eye but then I, I did understand of course that um, even at that young age that without the surgery there was, it was a good chance that I could lose my eyesight or at least have it damaged even further. Uh, it was diagnosed in 2011 um, after I had an accident in the in our garden actually uh, I got hit in the eye by uh, the twi some twigs on a tree and I ended up in A&E. Um, and uh, they discovered that the pressure in the eye that I damaged was high than it should be. And so I was called back to the clinic and they diagnosed in my right eye that I had uh, glaucoma. Uh, my left eye was fine at the time and the left eye continued fine for a number of years. So that's how I was initially diagnosed. Although I have a history in the family, my father had, my late father had glaucoma. Thank you so much, everyone. Excellent answers. And next question. Um, in terms of the diagnostic process, um, could you walk us through that, please? Uh, yes. Yeah, so um, the optometrist suggested that uh, I should then go and see a uh, kind of specialist. And um, I then went to uh, see a uh, specialist. I'm very fortunate uh, in that because of my work 
um, I had uh, private health insurance, and so I was able to to skip uh, towards the front of the uh, queue, for which I'm uh, extremely grateful. But um, I then went, uh, I think about three weeks later, and was diagnosed with uh, advanced uh, sort of open angle glaucoma. So um, that's uh, that's the diagnosis. I think initially at the, um, at the opticians, it was very you know, it was very relaxed. It was just a case of the, the, the ophthalmic optician sort of did, did various non-intrusive tests and um, was able to, through the scanning at the, at the back of the eye, uh, able to identify the, the, the problem. Um, as he said, he wasn't, he wasn't in a position to give an absolute diagnosis, but then made a, a referral to uh, the consultant and um, paid what I considered to be a, you know, a nominal fee really to see a consultant privately very quickly to get the full diagnosis. But that was, um, that was far more intrusive. And for a, for a man who has a, a proper phobia of, uh, of eyes, it was quite a traumatic experience going through all the tests with him touching my eyes and pulling me around and so on. So but, uh, once that was all done and dusted, that was it then. For me, it was quite stressful. Um, so like I say, I'd, I'd seen my optician for a regular checkup um, in 2021. And it, it did take nearly six months to actually get the full diagnosis. And during that time, uh, to be honest, it was really quite stressful because I didn't know anything about glaucoma. Um, uh, to be honest, I panicked really because I, I assumed I would be losing my sight. Um, so yes, it, it was quite a stressful process actually getting the referral. Um, once I was at the uh, outpatient clinic, um, it was explained to me there would be several checks that would be carried out. So there was a, a pressure test um, undertaken on my eye. Um, there was a visual field test. Um, and then um, my eye was anaesthetized with some eye drops and the ophthalmologist, um, the consultant, um, took a very close up examination of my eyes. Um, I, I wasn't fully aware, I think, of, of what the process would be. And obviously anybody poking your eye for the first time, if you're not used to it, it, it is quite a stressful process. Um, but I did feel it was very thorough. Uh, and at that point, they were able to tell me um, exactly what the diagnosis was so that that in a way was reassuring yeah I'd been I suppose I'd been going to the the eye clinic for a couple of years as I said and they obviously kept um, repeating the visual fields tests and I think um, initially they weren't they weren't sure I guess whether it was glaucoma or not and then you know after a couple of years they were they were convinced that that it was uh, presumably they'd seen a a deterioration in the in the visual field test results and obviously they were aware of the family history uh, what happened then was of course that I had to notify the the DVL the DVLA and um, I had to sit the compulsory um, eye test to continue to drive uh, which I was able to pass uh, pretty easily actually I mean, obviously, with the visual field test uh, that they do at the clinic, they do one eye at a time. And that's not the case with the DVLA tests. Um, you use both eyes uh, as you would when you were driving. So uh, I, I didn't have any difficulty at all in reaching the required standard for, for driving. So um, I think the initial change um, you know, was that was I had to um, put eye drops in both eyes basically to try and you know keep the pressures under control. I think it was just literally I was I was expecting this anyway, and I literally was going once a year, so I just was going for my my routine appointment. I had had no problems with my vision other than the fact that I have eye trouble anyway. I've wear glasses as I say all those years. Um, but the thing, I also had a, a funny feeling behind my eyes. I can't really describe it, but since I've had all the treatment, I haven't had it since. But it just, particularly when it was getting late at night, it, my eyes felt just peculiar and I couldn't really put my finger on it. Uh, yes, yeah, so when, when I went to the hospital, they um, did the pressure test, which was much nicer than how they do it down at the optician when they blow into your eyes, uh, which I just could not do. Um, but they just uh, put a, a, a sort of liquid into my eye and were able to 
uh, work out the pressures from that somehow, uh, a much more pleasant arrangement. And uh, it, it did go very, very high. And as a result of that, um, the first thing that they did was that they noticed I got cataract. So they weren't what they call right, but they felt that that was important to have the cataracts removed. So I've had cataracts removed in both eyes. Um, and then the pressure in my right eye was still extremely high, uh, 18, I think it was. And uh, so they then decided that they needed to do a little operation, which I had uh, uh, late January. And I'm delighted to say just last week that now I've been given the all clear as a result of that. Um, initially, um, having had this little op, which is just going on a day um, of surgery, not, not a long one at all. Um, it, it, uh, the pressure dropped considerably. So I was, I've literally been visiting the hospital once a week and they've been absolutely superb looking after me. And now they don't want to see me for nearly a year. So I'm feeling really, really happy. And I find I actually very often forget to put my glasses on because I can read without my glasses. Uh, so I think I've been very, very lucky. Uh, yes, I'd not really heard much about it, although I knew my grandparents had had glaucoma and mum and dad hadn't been diagnosed at that time because it was only sort of they were on that in the 60s. Um, but they were later diagnosed at the same time as well. Yeah, so. Um, I didn't know much about it and my, I didn't have too many problems, so it was a bit of a shock. Um, but like I say, I didn't know much about it till I read up a bit. But yeah, it can be scary. Like I say, I went to the hospital and they did some tests and all sorts of pictures and um, a scan on my head. And uh, like I say, I didn't really know much about it. So they just started to uh, treat me to keep the pressure low. Um, so it was a bit of an unusual case, I felt, sort of sitting in the waiting room with a lot of more elderly people. Um, but I did like, I sort of thought, oh, they're taking good care of me because I'm a lot younger than the typical patients that they had. My, my grandma, my, my, my maternal grandma, used to tell me about how she used to take her dad to Manchester Eye Hospital because he had a glaucoma. But in them days, of course, they couldn't do anything about it. She eventually developed glaucoma. But there again, in those days, there was nothing they could do about it. And she eventually lost her sight when I was about 10. Um, my paternal grandmother never saw me. She lost her sight before I was born. And... I know it sounds awful, perhaps, but in, in those days, you know, people had outside toilets. So she had a, a piece of rope from her back door to the loo, the outside toilet, and it had knots in it so that she knew where she was in the garden on the path by counting the amount of knots to get to the toilet. And that made a hell of a big impression on a little girl in those days. I mean, I'm, I'm going back to like the 19. 50s 1960s but you know you think then well I, I don't want to end up like this so it's it, it's always been um, a, a thing running through the family you know you get your eyes checked regularly it, 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 it in a way it's like a way of life you know you just get your eyes checked <laughs> the the thing that as I've realized over the years as well because since like being quite young, I've always had my eyes tested, you know, because of it going through the family. Um, as the years have gone on, there's, there's, there's more tests. They're completely pain free. There's no discomfort or anything. I mean, it takes up what, half an hour? It doesn't just even take up half an hour of a day, does it? And if you just think about it, it's, it could save your vision, which is the main thing. You won't go blind, whereas years ago you would go blind. Now you don't. Oh, well, the, you know, the unlikelihood of it is that you will. And I think that's really important because you only have to put a blindfold on, especially 
children to show them the point of, you know, what it would be like not to have your sight to bring it home. Um, my, um, my maternal grandma, she um, always remembered me as a 10 year old because that was when she lost her sight of me. So when I was 15, sort of thing, she still thought I was a little girl who had hair, ribbons in her hair and sort of things like that, you know, which I suppose is an age thing anyway. But it just makes you realise that to lose your sight is really, it's a, it's a precious thing. You only have one shot at it, don't you? When I was first diagnosed, um, I felt very, very nervous. I was apprehensive. I thought, well... I didn't know what to expect. And and back, well, in 1991, when I was younger, um, there was no Googling symptoms. You know, you couldn't just kind of go online and, and have a quick look at, at what the possibilities could be. Um, so it was like, it was quite a scary time. It was um, like a, a whole lot of uncertainty. But the consultants and the, the eye hospital nurses were, were absolutely fantastic. And they were really, uh, really good at putting my mind at ease. And I remember a conversation with them uh, while they'd said, well, you know, with this treatment, it's, it's very successful treatment. Um, the surgery isn't why well, you stay in hospital for a long time. You know, it's, it's quite a, a quick process and you'd have a few weeks recovery. But after that, they were fairly optimistic that I could continue on uh, with my life as normal. It was OK. I mean, it's always been a bit patchy in that depending who I saw, at the hospital. I mean, I didn't know until quite recently what type of glaucoma I had um, because I, I never received any information as to what it was. Um, but re the hospital trust, um, as a different trust has taken over the hospital in the last few years, and I've now started getting letters after each appointment. Um, but it was, um, I didn't really get a great deal of information about, about the condition. I was just diagnosed with it. Um, so I, I, the, I, the first consultant I saw was actually very helpful. She, and she did, if she had time, she would answer questions. But when she, once she left, uh, it was difficult. The staff, didn't, the staff didn't always seem to have the time to answer questions. And I once asked a question and was told it was far too complicated to answer. Again, all excellent answers. And um, how has glaucoma impacted your day-to-day -day lives? Um, I think compared to many others, uh, I've been in incredibly kind of fortunate in that uh, although there had been some uh, damage uh, done already, um, actually we were able to sort of catch it and uh, start treatment, which has meant that, um, you know, it's, not done as much damage as it, it possibly could have done. And I know that's, that's not the same for everyone. So I've, I've been very fortunate. Um, I guess it's the routine of, uh, of drops, um, you know, every day for the last, whatever it is, 22 years, and hopefully for a good few more years yet. Um, so, you know, making sure that even if my day isn't routine, that I keep the routine uh, of taking my, uh, taking my eye drops. Um, and that's something that I've, got better at I think when I first started um, I quite often would miss uh, a morning or, or an evening but pretty much now it's ingrained into my uh, into my day that you know I start with eye drops and I, I finish with eye drops so um, but by and large uh, it hasn't uh, significantly uh, kind of impacted my day to day so I'm very fortunate unlike uh, unlike some others. It, it kind of it answered a few questions for a start. So then that, that enabled me to answer, to ask some new questions of the optician and how I might be able to, to manage the situation. And uh, they were very helpful and um, been able to sort all that out. And I'm, uh, I'm, I'm back playing squash these days. Um, but there was also the, the problem of having to um, inform the DVLA and uh, then go through a process of another, another eye test, a field vision test, and that kind of from, you know, I, I do a lot of driving and it's, yeah, I'm on the road three or four days a week from drive best part of 30,000 miles. It would have had a massive impact on me work-wise to suddenly find myself not being able to, to drive. So there was a lot of uncertainty for a few weeks um, until I did the test. And then, well, you know, once the test was done and everybody was happy, it was, um, it was okay. But I mean, even with the insurance company, 
speaking to the, the insurance company, I think I was in Scotland when, when my company informed my insurance company of my glaucoma diagnosis. And it was like, we well, can't drive anymore. And it's like, there was a, quite a lot of ignorance around what the situation was at the time. So a lot of uncertainty. But um, once you get the, the, um, the positive test results back, um, it all settles down and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm confident in my driving these days. So, so fortunately, I think it was caught early. I'm, I'm in the younger age bracket for glaucoma. I have absolutely no family history, no real risk factors other than short sightedness, um, which again is a very low risk factor. Um, so it was it was out the blue. It, it was a complete surprise. Um, I was a, offered a treatment, which is daily eye drops, which I take at night um, so that you have the best um, chance of contact with the eyes over over nighttime while you're sleeping. Um, and so far, that appears to be keeping the pressures in check. Um, and I generally go back for a checkup every six months or so. Um, in terms of day to day, um, I, obviously, eye drops are eye drops. It takes a bit of practice. Um, but really hasn't caused me any inconvenience. Um, and the more I've read up through um, organisations like Glaucoma UK about, uh, you know, what to expect, what the diagnosis means and some of the technical jargon, it's been an awful lot more reassuring and I'm, I'm a lot less um, concerned about what the future might hold for my eyesight. Initially, um, it, it didn't have too much of an impact really I, I was working I carried on working I had to obviously um, learn how to apply eye drops which isn't as easy as you might think particularly um, glaucoma drops where the advice is to is if possible to take them sort of lying down and to keep the eye closed for two minutes after you've put them in so um not too bad if you can if you if the frequency with which you have to apply them means that you can do it at home but obviously if you're working and you've got to put them in the middle of the day that makes life a bit harder um i was fortunate in the sense that by the time i was having to put them in three or four times a day well four times a day at the peak actually um i was retired by then so it was some years later um so really other than that other than having to remember to um, put the drops in and to learn how to do it accurately and properly um, it didn't have too great an impact on my on my way of life hasn't really thankfully not really much at all i have i have to put three lots of drops in a day for the glaucoma and i've since um, developed dry eye syndrome so I have drops for that as well so I just have to do a number of drops a day but uh, you know it's fine I've got used to it. I think the, the, the difficulty with glaucoma is that you don't realise that you've got it. Um, I, I couldn't see any real real problem um, but uh, in Gloucestershire at that time that was before Covid we had uh, um, two year, twice a year where we would meet up with fellow people and they showed us films about glaucoma and how it affects us and how gradually our sight, is, you lose sight. The, the difficulty is uh, coming to terms with the fact that actually you are losing a bit of sight, but you, you, you actually do not realise it. So to begin with it, it didn't really bother me because I, I felt I was seeing things. But when going to these meetings and showing us exactly what was happening was uh, quite revealing. And uh, then, of course, it becomes a bit more concerning. And I, th I think the thing is that uh, uh, quite a few people don't realise that it's free if you do have a history of it in your family. You don't have to pay, you know. The, the one thing I would say is since COVID, I um, I don't feel as though I've had as many uh, hospital appointments to be checked as much. Um, but the um, the optician that I do go to now, he, he really is good. Um, and 
is actually um, probably watching out for my eyes now more than the local hospital is to tell you the truth but that's a personal thing isn't it well I was worried obviously um because of family history um but then you you know you realize that medicines come on so so fantastic over the years that there isn't really any any reason to worry I mean my mum was diagnosed when she was 60 and she died when she was 98 and she could still see just as good (laughs) because she did the drops every day or, you know, she, you know, she, she, and I think she was a good teacher in that, um, in that department, you know, do it, do as I do and and you will be all right. And it, and it was true. Um, it doesn't really impact my life at, at the moment. I take drops, I use drops every morning in both eyes. <clears throat> I, um, we take a couple of minutes on each eye um apart from that it hasn't really touched wood it hasn't affected my vision so far um it is a bit like living though with uh with a sort of ticking time bomb in that you never know whether it's going to develop further I do get anxious every time I'm going to a either an optician appointment or the hospital because I just wait for them to say the pressure's gone up again and see what they're going to do about it. So it is, nobody can tell you for sure whether it's going to remain as it is or whether it's going to get worse. And I think that's that's the one difficulty I've got with it. Brilliant. And what advice would you give to others who are not aware of glaucoma? Yeah, I I think to, to read as much as you, uh, as read up as much as you, uh, as you possibly can. I have to say, um, I only learnt uh, about Glaucoma UK um, in the last kind of five years, which was uh, a shame um, because there's some sort of fantastic uh, resources there, uh, but was very helpful to me because during the last five years, um, the damage from the glaucoma has sort of increased. So I've gone on to a slightly different regime. So uh, I've had stents uh, now in, in both eyes and uh, I've had sort of the cataracts removed. Um, and the Glaucoma UK website has been incredibly helpful in terms of hearing about other people's experiences, uh, experiencing the operations, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I would say to, to people, if you have any have any questions, you know, do go look at the uh, Glaucoma UK um, kind of website because there's a, just a, a wealth of information there that uh, that you can um, look up about you know different different things. I think that you know something like this podcast obviously it perhaps helps to, to bring awareness, but you know I kind of knew that glaucoma was possibly in my family at some point, but I wasn't really aware of you know of the symptoms. You just get told it's tunnel vision, which doesn't really you know, cut it as a as a description of what the the symptoms are. But I mean, looking back over the years, you know, I, I can remember feeling that you know, my right eye was um, it was a bit further forward than my left eye. Well, that's you know, perhaps I was feeling the fact that it was there was pressure in the eye. And if I'd have known that high pressure, high ocular pressure was a symptom, I would have gone to see a specialist optician a lot sooner. I think that's an important message for people to take. You know, if you, if your eyes don't feel right, it, you know, it's completely different to to not having good vision. It's completely different. Well, like I say, this was entirely unexpected for me. I had none of the risk factors. This didn't run in my family. Um, you know, there was nothing to uh, suggest I would be at, at particular risk, and so it was a random eye appointment, um, and. I would encourage anybody um, to access their optician. Um, I I think there's a lot of people are worried about whether they can afford it. And it's worth looking into, um, you know, options for getting vouchers for your eye test and so on, because it's so important. Opticians can see amazing things through your eyes, sometimes not always just to do with your eyesight, but they can they can pick up things very early. Um, and I would definitely encourage people to take advantage of that on a regular basis. I think the main thing is is to is to keep having your eyes tested. I mean, as I said at the beginning, I was lucky. I I had a, a regime of annual eye tests anyway, admittedly for other reasons. But it was during that process that the condition was effectively 
first flagged up. Um, so yeah, keep keep getting your eyes tested, uh, particularly if you've got a family history of glaucoma. And if you do get a diagnosis, um, stay positive because you know there's a range of treatments out there, eye drops, surgery, what have you, um, which can help keep it under control so that um, the worst impacts are delayed as long as possible and you can carry on living a fairly normal, fairly normal life. Yeah, always get your eyes tested um, just to check for your, your eye health, even if there's not that much wrong with your eyesight. You know, you, it's not necessarily to do with your, your eyesight. You may have got it. There's so many different sorts of it as well. So, yeah, always have your eyes tested at least every two years. I think, uh, I think it's quite important to check your family history um, uh, because I understand that it, it is uh, transmitted through the family. And I wasn't, I, I did eventually discover a cousin of my mother's that had it. Um, I, I think that's quite important. And um, I've let my family know that they are entitled to free eye tests because of that. Um, I mean, ba basically, I carry on with my life as normal. I, I don't, don't find it a big problem, but I do think it's important that it's treated because I, I, I would hate to lose my sight. Chris Hunton, Martin Sawyer, Rachel Dalgleish, Roy Hathaway, Louise Gow, Carolyn Franks, Helen Simpson, Jane Maloney, Andrea Errington, and Lynn Ramsey. Lynn Ramsey, thank you so much. And last, a set of questions for you, Emily, Emily Dunmore-Revel. Um, you're here to speak to us on behalf of your daughter, who I understand um, had a very early glaucoma diagnosis. So could you please just talk us through that? Yeah, so um, if I'm honest, we noticed from when she was first born that there was something wrong with her left eye. Um, so it didn't come like to someone diagnosing it till her six to eight week checkup, the antenatal checkup. Um, and she didn't have a red light reflex. So then they obviously thought there was something wrong. So then we got transferred to over to the hospital, which then they was like checking her pressures. And they said, yeah, she's got glaucoma. What was the diagnostic process like? Quite quick, actually. Um, they was, they was really good with explaining everything to me. I mean, I'd, obviously I did do my own Googling <laughs> myself, but they was quite good at explaining everything um, in like depth so where I could understand it. So no like jargon or anything. Um, but yeah, it was really good. And then literally about four weeks into the whole like them doing everything, I was she was put into Birmingham and then straight for the operation to get her pressures down. Is she currently receiving any treatment? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously she has um, regular drops in her eye. Um, She's now having to wear glasses full time. Um, we're currently on a waiting list to get a second operation done uh, because the first one wasn't as successful as it should have been. Um, but then we do have regular checkups pretty much every four to six weeks at the hospital um, just to see how her pressures are. And how has glaucoma impacted her day to day life and indeed yours as a parent? Um, I mean, she was a um, so when she was first diagnosed, she didn't really put any weight on. So like, because she was so little, they had like worrying, but I don't know whether that was because she was being tested for, for you know, for the glaucoma and being prodded and poked and everything. Um, but yeah, so that's probably affected her the most. And obviously that wearing the glasses, she doesn't like them. She tries to take them off all the time. Um, she's okay with the drop. So she's quite used to them now. Um, she just takes it like a champ. <laughs> it is quite worrying, me personally, worrying, um, you know, with her eyesight. We don't know how much damage it has caused to her optic nerve. Um, that They're still unsure because she's still obviously developing with her eyesight because she's still quite young. Um, so we don't know where we stand if, you know, if she does get worse eyesight or... Um, if she's going to need extra help with anything or if uh, they have told me that it might go into her her right eye so we're you know unsure where where everything is at the moment and what advice would you give to other parents yeah to just always get um medical professional help um they're, they're literally there all the time as well 
um, even on the end of a phone call with my millions of questions, they're, they're there to answer. Emily Dunmore Revel, thank you so much. And I just wanted to say thank you to all of the voices of glaucoma who have joined us to speak about this hugely important topic. And for anyone listening who would like to get more information, please visit glaucoma.uk.